Hello everybody, Mr. B here, and today we've got something pretty special. It is the quintessential meat in any meat in three. It is the blue in the blue plate special. Today we're doing meatloaf. Let's get going. Okay, so let's talk about the ingredients and mise en place for our meatloaf. So let's talk about the meat. I am using some sweet Italian sausage and some 93.7 ground beef. Two pounds of ground beef, one pound of sausage. I'm using 93.7 here because I'm bringing the sausage into play. Um, if you weren't using um, sausage, uh, you could use an 80-20 for this. I think that would be fine. Turkey is a great substitute as well. We will be topping it with some bacon because why not? Okay. We're going to have some grated carrots. That's about two grated carrots. Why grated carrot? Two reasons. Moisture and sweetness. We have an egg, some onion, fresh parsley, garlic, Parmesan cheese that will grate down, and some day-old bread, which we will be soaking in some milk. Get to that shortly. Salt and pepper, dry seasonings. We're using some garlic powder, some mustard powder, and some thyme. I think the thyme here gives it just that hmm factor. Using one packet of your trusty Lipton, onion soup mix, ketchup of course, some breadcrumbs if we need them. We'll see how it goes with the bread. Um, you can also use saltine crackers. I think that's delicious. You just need to pulverize the hell out of them. And some Lee and Perrin. So this will be the spices that we will use for the base. So we'll start putting this together. Okay, okay. We're going to start by sauteing the onions and the garlic. We'll start with the onions here. Um, and some butter and a little bit of olive oil. You're going to want to go ahead and do this and set this aside so that it cools down before you put it into your meat. So that's why we're going to go ahead and get this done. We are going to sweat these out so they become translucent, then add the garlic, go about one minute. And uh, even though it's not in my description or my recipe, I'm going to add some Cajun seasoning to this because I just can't help it. Um, you can find the recipe at, on my blog at mrb175.com. The video is also posted there as well as YouTube. You know that because you're here on YouTube or on the blog. Whichever way you got to me, thank you for coming along. So, we'll sweat these. Let me get the... A little Cajun Cajun going on here. For some reason, I just think I want it. It's not going to hurt nothing. Sauteing these on down, also a good idea because otherwise if you put them in raw, there's a good chance that, you know, it's going to have a little more of a raw taste to it, right? Duh. And, uh, you know, some folks don't like to bite into a big old wad of onion. I get it. Oh, yes, indeed. Let me get this garlic going in here. I forgot to mention, you can use a green bell pepper or red bell pepper. You're going to want to saute that in with this as well. I forgot it at the grocery store. There is a massive music festival going on here in Midtown. 60,000 of your favorite friends and family. And I'm just not getting the car out and fighting that for a damn bell pepper. So, you know... When without, improvise, right? I'm gonna get this day old bread going here. We're gonna crumble it. You could use a food processor. Um, and then I'm gonna douse this with some milk and let it get to soaking. So let's get a little milk in here. We're gonna start with maybe about half a cup, cup, something like that. It's gonna absorb. And just start squishing that in. Mm. I'll let that soak for a little bit while the onions is onions are cooling. 
and uh, we'll go to next steps. All right, let's start putting it together. We'll go in with the egg and carrots and the parsley. Okay. Let's get our onion mixture on in. that delicious butter and everything in it too because why not it's yummy parmesan cheese and we're gonna have a little bit of breadcrumbs the milk is a little wet so we'll see how that goes and let's just kind of you got to get in here with your hands Mm -hmm. You don't want to over incorporate this. So we're going to start with the beef. Beef. And my sausage. To that, we will do a little pepper, liberal pepper, little hell and a pinch of salt because the onion soup mix mixture does have quite a bit of salt in that content and then let's just start incorporating it shall we going in with a claw method here see you got to get in there with your hands, guys. This is the only way to do it. Nothing else is going to work. And you're very close to having meatballs here, too, as well, with some slight altercations. Um, let's talk about the meat again. I mean, I mentioned turkey. That's a really good thing to do. A lot of people will do beef and veal. A lot of people do beef, veal, and pork, much like um, you would for your, uh, for your meatball scenario. Let's get some. Now, um, in addition to the onion soup mix, you'll want to start putting in your, your dry spices here. That's the dried mustard. A little bit of thyme. I washed my hands during a break here, guys, so I am being mindful of cross-contamination. And garlic powder. Yum. Get some ketchup in this thing. And some Worcestershire sauce. And we're going to do a final incorporation here. Really, basically, a fold and turn. Okay, we'll get it poured out, form it into a loaf. Okay, next up, we're going to make the glaze that's going to go on top. Start with a little ketchup. So easy. Some Worcestershire sauce. And some honey. You can also use brown sugar because you want this uh, this caramelization, especially combined with that sweet sausage I got going on, kids. Let me tell you. Let's do this whisk together. Mm, that's almost like a barbecue sauce. I need a little more Worcestershire for my taste here. All 
fine. We are going to turn out and shape this into a loaf. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come here, kid. Okay. Using some parchment paper here just for, you know, to keep it tidy. show you guys something. About three slices of bacon. <laughs> All that's going to ooze down and baste this meatloaf. We're going to cover it with the glaze. Paint this down on all sides. Look. You know, say what you want. Now, <clears throat> for those friends looking at Michelle out there that are doing the keto, I have heard that instead of the bread and the breadcrumbs, you can substitute pork rinds for that. I mean, who doesn't like pork rinds? If you have any tips, like for example, you know, how would you avoid the honey and the glaze? I mean, that, that is totally optional if you were wanting to go carb free on this thing. Leave a comment and let me know some good suggestions. I'm, you know, just trying to, you know, learn about that particular cooking style and method. So keto people, let me know some tips and tricks on how to make this maybe a little more carb friendly. In the oven, uncovered, and it's going to go about an hour or, till the, or until the temperature reaches 160 degrees. That's Fahrenheit for my friends in Europe. Um, that usually at 375, it's at least going to be an hour. So in we go. And we will check on that puppy a little bit later on, guys. So I was sitting here thinking, what am I going to have with the meatloaf? And I realized I had some asparagus I needed to use. So we're going to roast the asparagus since we've already got the oven on. Why not? So I'm going to take a minute and show you how to do that real quick. Um, so I've taken the asparagus and I've knocked off the, the, the woody ends, right? We're just going to do a drizzle of some good olive oil. And we'll hit it with a little bit of salt. Liberal black pepper, some fresh garlic. Why not? And some Parmesan cheese. This is so delicious. Not too bad for you on the waistline. And then I'm just going to make sure that everything is nice and coated on that. Now, I have the oven going at 375, but typically I would do um, a roasted veg at about 400 Fahrenheit for um, probably at least 20 minutes or so. Uh, so I, at 375, I'll throw this in here at eh, 25, 30 minutes. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it, you don't want it. I like my roasted veg to still have a little bit of bite, the al dente to it, and not just be complete and total mush. How long did that take, people? Come on, how easy? All right, kids, it's time. I've tested it. We're going to get this out of here. Ooh. Indeed. And in goes the asparagus. Why? Because after thinking about it, 
You know the drill. The meat loaf has got to rest. This way, if I put the asparagus in, let it go about 20 minutes, and I know I'm not cutting into this too early. All right? We're going to put a tin on it. Keep it warm. minutes or so for the asparagus and we'll check back then look at this big old mess of deliciousness that is some serious meatloaf y'all and the asparagus is going to be delicious and garlicky and parmesan-y and uh, I can't take it much longer. Let's make a plate. Okay I'm going to go for a little end piece here. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh my God. And look at all this Parmesan deliciousness on the asparagus. Can you even? Now, guys, the white trash in me. I like a little bit of ketchup to dip mine in. Let's take a bite. Here we go. Mm. That is so good. Soul food at its best. It is, it's moist. Um, it's got the sweetness of that sausage mixed in with that beef. It just don't get any better than that. Mmm. Meal prep idea, okay? So what you can do when you've had your fill, cut this down into portions Wrap it in some clear wrap, put it in a gallon bag, throw it in the freezer. You want some meatloaf, pull it out, give it a day to thaw, reheat it in the oven, you're going to be good to go. So here you have it, guys. This is meatloaf. Delicious. Comfort food at its best. It's the blue plate special of the universe. Um, click subscribe. Come along for the ride. We're going to see you next time, kids. Take care.